whether you are thinking about buying an EV, you've just bought your first EV maybe in the summer, or you've owned EVs for years, it goes without saying that there are some differences in winter. Some are very positive and your life will get so much easier compared to when you had a petrol or diesel car. Other things, a little bit frustrating, worth being aware of, and you can plan your life, your driving life around it and not have any problems. So this is hopefully gonna be a short video quickly whistling through some of the things you should be aware of. The first major positive of EVs comes with the tech that a lot of these cars have. Majority of EVs have an app on your phone and you can defrost and precondition your car from the comfort of your bed if you want to. This is so much better than the old days of having to run a car on the drive, filling your driveway with fumes, scraping the car, getting frustrated and still ending up with a misted up uh, frosty screen after all that effort. The reality is with say a Tesla, you just open the app, click defrost, and a few minutes later, your car is sat there nice and warm. The battery is preconditioned, ready for optimal driving, and you haven't even left your front door yet. So that is a massive benefit. And if you leave it plugged in, you're using the cheaper grid energy rather than risking losing a few miles of range. So that's great. Typical, make a video about cold weather driving and the sun now comes out. So yeah, anyway, on to the next point. The big thing to remind you of and this goes for every car. EVs do have better traction control than petrol or diesel cars. The way the electric motors work is they're very, very, very controllable. However, it is traction control, not traction creation. If you have no traction, you are still gonna lose control. You cannot gain back traction. What it can do is make the most of whatever's there and hopefully by some well-timed or changes to the electric motor's power, you can regain control and continue with your journey safely. However, don't assume just because you drive a four-wheel drive Tesla that you are completely superhuman and you're never gonna have any problems. Plenty of Model 3 performances with four-wheel drive, add co-part and similar after being spanked into a hedge. So take it easy, go home in one piece. Everyone's better for that. The reality is your range will drop in the same way that in petrol cars the miles per gallon degrades and you go less miles or fewer miles for the same amount of fuel it's exactly the same with an electric car the difference is in an electric car it's so obvious how much range you've got because everyone's obsessed by it the reality is i, I never really pay too much attention to the range um because my driving is generally normal in a week and I know when I'm gonna charge. And if I'm on a long road trip, I just let the sad enough sort it out. But in a petrol car, most people just wait until the, the light goes off and they've got 50 miles left and they go and fill up with fuel again. But they don't realize that that happens more often in cold weather. Um, denser air, you know, other conditions, it's gonna hit your range. And that's no difference in an EV. So yes, your range will drop. Yes, that's normal. Some of it's because of, um, an electric only thing such as the fact that you've got a massive battery that needs warming up to get to op optimum temperature and this is why it's always best to precondition your car before a journey whilst it's still plugged in use the grid energy and then you still leave with 100 percent battery or whatever you've charged to but the reality is yes your range will drop that's normal and the other thing to consider is if you're the type of person who makes lots of stops during the day for example, you drive to one location for work, spend four hours there, the battery will then get cold, it then needs to warm up again. You drive 10 miles down the road to another site or another location and then stay there for another four hours and the battery will drop again. So you end up using, of your 100% battery, some for driving and some for warming the battery up. That's the reality of having a massive battery to power your car. It's still an enormous ton cheaper than running a petrol or diesel car, but you've got to remember that. The other thing to consider is that amazing thing called regenerative braking or regen doesn't work so well when the battery's cold. So you're gonna to have to wait for that battery to warm up before you can regen and get some of that free energy. So when you first drive off on a very cold morning and the battery's cold, don't assume you got regen, use the brakes as normal. And then as the, it 
so the car warms up you'll be able to use regen and that little icon you need to check your manual for what icon you're going to see when the regen is not available that will come back job done i'm going to reiterate this fact if you get to work and you've got 20 miles of range left and your commute home is 15 to 20 miles do not assume you're going to get back in that car after an eight hour workday and that range is still going to be there it won't be the computer will work out what range equivalent it needs to warm up the car and drop your range by that much yes it's frustrating but it's a reality so understand that plan ahead and to be fair most people and i know we're privileged to, to have off street parking at home but 95 percent of our mileage is charged at off-peak rates so it's like five pounds for 300 miles uh, thanks to octopus energy uh, if you want 50 miles which would get you you know 3,000 miles of free charging link in description um, and they've got some great towers to, to make it easy to charge off peak um, so yeah just charge your car up every night just keep it topped up you know add five ten percent every night and you'll never have any problems in winter if the worst does happen and you need a recovery vehicle yes the ev friendliness of recovery companies is getting better and better and they will help you they will tow you to a charger um, if it's your fault then you're gonna have to pay for it reality is that um, so try not to rely on them no one wants to be stuck at the side of the road for three hours waiting for a tow to go and get a charge again just get into a habit of making sure your car's topped up charge it up overnight don't run it like a petrol or diesel car where you just keep driving until it gets down to 50 miles of range and they start flashing at you keep that battery topped up batteries like to be topped up um, it's the abc of ev driving always be charging whenever you get a chance plug it in and the battery will love you for it this is pretty boring and obvious advice but it, it's worth saying especially if you've got a car like a tesla with lots of different cameras just keep them clean just have a rag um, in your car go around wipe all the cameras you'll be able to use reversing camera far better and autopilot and like will work better um, having the clean cameras it's always something I've wondered about robo taxis who's going to clean them but anyway that's a problem for Tesla to solve not me I can go around for a rag give everything a little wipe and it's it works it's the same for petrol or diesel car if you've got those type of services the other thing that goes about saying whether you've got an EV or not is tires they are the only thing keeping you on the ground so make sure that uh, your tires are looked after in the winter you're probably going to have to add some air to get the PSI to where you want it to be and winter or year round tires if you do a lot of driving icy weather definitely worth the investment if you live in england where just before christmas it's mild and i'm hot in just a jumper and a hat then maybe you don't need them but just be aware know your conditions and don't fall into the trap of getting into a nicely preconditioned warm car and think that the weather outside is lovely and warm so yeah, even though you haven't had to scrape that windscreen, it's still very cold and the roads are cold, so take it easy. Similarly to tyres, make sure that the windscreen washers are topped up with fluid. Make sure you've got a suitable um, sort of fluid in there based on the temperatures you're going to have. It's all common sense, but I have noticed that in cars like the Tesla, it does seem to go through quite quickly. And yes, it comes up and tells you when you're running low, but if you're on a long journey, that doesn't last long. So yeah, just keep it topped up. It's not difficult. In conclusion, I feel that I'm trying to give very unbiased advice on this channel. I've had EVs of various types since 2018. We're now at the end of 2025. So coming into my eighth year as an EV owner. Um, I think they're great. I think if you go into it open eyes and you know what to expect which is the purpose of videos like this you are able to be a bit more relaxed and have a very easy life you know evs are simpler they don't tend to go wrong touch wood um in the same way that sort of petrol and diesel cars go especially when i compare to like my friendship groups and the problems that some of my friends have had with their diesel cars and I've had with previous cars, let's be honest. Um, as long as you know the pitfalls and you know what to expect, you know your range is going to drop, so plan accordingly. You know that if a battery gets cold during the day, it's going to eat into some range to warm back up for the journey home. If you know all these things, then EVs are just brilliant. And if you can charge them for five pounds for 300 miles of range, it's just so cheap motoring. Um, 
even with sort of Rachel Reeves and the Labour Party trying to screw us over yet again. So yeah, if you have any questions, check some other videos I've done or just ask below in the comments. I'm more than happy to help people out. Um, I couldn't find this kind of advice as easily back in 2018. So hopefully this helps you. And see you on another video. Thanks for watching. Bye.